Hey guys, playing around with a Pickaxe 08M microcontroller chip. It's just this very basic 8-pin um, dual inline package. I want to see if I can synthesize a sine wave by programming it. Well, with this IC I can program up to 4 pins to be outputs. So that gives me 4 bits that I can you know, connect to this R2R network, which is a digital to analog converter. That'll give me an output of 16 discrete levels. And after that, we'll run it through a low pass filter and uh, see what kind of sine wave it looks like on the scope. Well, I had to figure out how I was going to use this chip. You know, how I was going to calculate the uh, points for the sine wave. You can do it by calculation in the program itself, you know, lookup tables, or even a combination of those two. Now this chip is very simple and doesn't have a lot of program space, so I figured I'll just go straight for a lookup table, and that way I can uh, kind of illustrate how I've uh, come to the, you know, calculations to make these points on the graph here. Well, like I said, I have 16 possible combinations, and the actual levels would be 0 through 15. That's not voltage levels, but I'm, I'm starting at 0, because, you know, with, in typical computer language, you, you start counting from 0. So I just, you know, wrote the numbers down like this. And one problem I noticed right off is because it's an even number of discrete levels, the zero level, you know, the zero point of the sine wave, is between two levels. So I had to break that out so I can, you know, calculate with the most accuracy this waveform. So what I did here is I drew the zero line right through the middle and because that is one half of a point up, I numbered it 0.5, and then the next step is 1.5, 2.5, and so on all the way up to 7.5. And same thing for the negative side. And not really going to use that for anything, but for the positive side, I'm going to use it for calculating. And there's somebody knocking at the door. Well, sorry about that, but. I don't want to have to reshoot that all over again. But anyway, now to calculate these points, I don't have to do a full 360 degrees of a sine wave. I could just do 90 degrees because, you know, it mirrors vertically and mirrors across the axis as well, the horizontal axis. So once I get these points, I can just figure it for the other side and just transpose the points I mean for the other side and for the negative half. Very simple. Well to find the position of these dots or the actual amplitude I need to find the angular position of the discrete output levels from the microcontroller. And that's uh, pretty straightforward to do. So, like 0.5, I just punch in on the calculator, 0.5, sorry about the glare, I have to move somewhere, so 0.5 divided by 7.5, 7.5 being the maximum, and then multiply that by 90, because that's the, you know, from 0 to 90, 90 is the maximum angle. And that tells me position 0.5 would be at 6 degrees. So I take the sine of that. That gives me that number. And now I have to multiply that by 7.5, which is the maximum of the scale. And that will give me the scale position to place that. Well, 0.78 is closest to 
5 and that's why I placed the dot. Okay, we'll do it one more time. Next level up is 1.5 and divide that by 7.5 Point two times 90. That's at 18 degrees. Take the sine of that. Multiply that by 7.5. 2.3. The closest position is 2.5. So right there. Now you're noticing something here. This is kind of a side note, but I'll just throw it in anyway. Notice that I'm rounding. Well, I can't put it exactly at 2.3 because my microcontroller can only output in discrete steps. This is called quantization error. So if you take that 2.5 and minus 2.3 you'll be left with some value it'll be like I don't know 0.2 or something and you know, as you go along the chart all the errors will make a little waveform that's kinda random goes along that's called quantization noise pretty neat because that's uh, when you get into digital audio and sampling and stuff you hear that a lot quantization noise so the more bits you have, the more accurate you can make the waveform. Therefore, you have less noise. But, yeah, that's just a little side note. I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, so after doing all that, I come up with this. And again, since I, you know, this is the top point. So I just mirrored around that axis and went down with that. And then I mirrored, or kind of transposed, I guess, to get the negative half. And I just punched it into the, the little programming software for the microchip. Before I go over to the computer and punch it into the software, I need to take the dots and translate them over to the actual bit value. And of course, this is in decimal here, so all I have to do is if it came at uh, 0.5 position, I know that's 8. At 2.5, I know that's uh, position 10. And let's say we have a negative value here. I know that's at position 4. So, not much to it. Okay, so I punched all my values into the program. So what's going on here is I, I'm setting the frequency to 8 megahertz and setting the pins to be outputs. Pin 0 is always an output, so that's why that's not shown. And pin 3 is always an input, so I have to add 8 to every number to shift that most significant bit over to the left one. So this is what the actual value is and this is what I have to enter into the microcontroller. So any number above 7 I have to add 8 to it. So 8 plus 8 is 16, 10 plus 8 is 18, so on and so forth. Now I did start at the top of the sine wave. You know, it just loops around so it doesn't really matter. So I guess technically it's a cosine wave, but the reason for doing that is this go to statement takes a couple cycles of processor time. And uh, I wanted to see if I could make sure the top of the uh, waveform is symmetrical. So instead of having an extra you know, value of 15, you know, once this pin's set, it's going to stay at that level through the go-to cycle and expand it a bit, the same amount as the statement. I'll have to check the actual uh, number of cycles these take, but we'll see. I'll just wing it and see what happens. 
So that's all it does. It starts at the top. You can see the numbers decrease. That's the bottom of the, the negative most peak of the sine wave here. And then it goes back up. Then we just repeat it. That's all it does. Okay, here's the circuit. Uh, the transistor and these things here are not connected now. They're for another video I'm going to make. But here's the microcontroller. Here's the resistor network to convert it to the discrete output levels. And this is what I get on the scope. Not too bad. Now I'm going to run it through a filter and see if we can make it smooth. Okay, I added a capacitor so we have a low pass filter. And look at that. Just that. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit pointy. I don't know. I'll have to spectrum analyze it and see what it uh, actually looks like. But that is the sine wave I synthesized using the pickaxe chip. Now it wouldn't be fun unless I connected this output to an amplifier and listen to it. Let's see here. I'll just measure all. And uh, somewhere there's the frequency. 84-ish. Around 84 hertz. If the camera will focus on that or not. Okay, I hooked up a small amplifier to the output of the digital to analog converter and hooked that up to the subwoofer right here. And I can hear that tone. I also hear uh, harmonics. So there are, it's not really a pure tone, it's not perfect. There's probably going to be some quantization errors that's going to cause the harmonics. Now here's what, it, here's what it sounds like if I remove that filter. Turn that off. So you're hit, hearing all that, uh, that discrete level noise coming through. But uh, that was it. It's a pretty interesting little project there. Thanks for watching.